honestly, uh, before I watched this episode, I wasn't looking forward to this episode based on what I heard about this episode. But then I watched the episode, and I'm like, this is a really good episode for whatever reason. <laughs> it's it's weird. <laughs> Pokemon! 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 Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Benzel, and welcome to another Pokemon X, Y, and Z anime discussion. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the Serena episode, the, the last major Serena episode that we got recently couple weeks ago I am now uh, doing a review on it just getting it through before the basic finale of the X Y and Z series with Ash anyway coming up soon so this of course is the episode where Serena organizes a Pokemon showcase and makes everyone happy and makes a decision about what she wants to do so of course I'm going to make this long synopsis as pretty short as much as I can there there will be like a couple images but then of course we'll go into what the, th the this particular episode in general so after prison tower has was prepared in the last episode where Meyer pulled the switch and the Lumios prison tower was completely okay and everyone was there it, it was like it, it was a question I think from what I understood, there was a question whether or not people were happy or not. Like, they're happy, but they still have a lot to recover from. So Serena, along with Sycamore's help, sets up a Pokemon showcase, which of course is joined by Shauna, and then later in the episode, Jesse. And then they do their per performancing to make the audience happy, and there's dancing, you know, uh, Marin's trying to dance with the lawn and stuff. So then there was a there was a point where Serena was uncertain of what to do. Does she accept Plermo's offer or does do, does she do something different? That was something that was brought up throughout the whole entire episode was well she has a plan to just go ahead and accept Plermo's offer of uh trying to train Serena to become a Kalos queen. But Serena was doubting whether or not she wanted to do that. So that's kind of what this episode was revolved around and stuff. So then at some point, everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of the good, a lot of the supporting characters, the rivals and recurring characters that we got did get to say goodbye to each other. Uh, that, that was specifically Shauna, Tierno, Trevor, and Sawyer. They said goodbye to Ash and the group, and it's unlikely we'll ever see them again as such. So, with, uh, of course, the exception of Alon and Marin, which will actually get their goodbyes in the final X, Y, and Z episode, which is coming this Thursday. And I say last X, Y, Z, X, Y, and Z episode because I'm not accounting the, the, uh, Sycamore and Alexa special with the legendary, the X, Y, Z legendary special because I don't think that's going to have Ash at all. So it's kind of like irrelevant because it doesn't have like Ash or whatever. And it just does, it's a special. So it's kind of its own thing. And then of course there's that whole Stunfisk thing that we don't know what's going on. So of course, yeah, so they'll get their goodbye in this coming Thursday or rather at the time of recording tomorrow i believe today is wednesday tomorrow is thursday so tomorrow will be the goodbye that alon and marin will get just not in this episode so then of course at some point we get grace showing up fast forward to an okay battle with Brakeson and pikachu i say okay because i am annoyed that pikachu is being used again and that'll be a criticism for tomorrow's episode involving the goodbye and finale of the X, Y, and Z series. Because there'll be another character battle, but it'll again be Pikachu. That one may have made sense, but come on now. <laughs> At this particular point, it's ridiculous that you're not being fair to Ash's other Pokemon. So it's like, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So, anyway... 
Okay, I forgot to mention this, but Grace does show up at some point, you know, to check on her daughter to see if she's okay. So then, of course, we fast forward to basically the near end of the episode after the battle where Serena rejects Plermo's offer, stating that she just doesn't want to brighten up the people or make them smile of the Kalos region. She doesn't want to be stuck in one region. She wants to inf basically infect, but in a positive way influence other people and make other people smile throughout the whole entire world which is why Serena would prefer to travel and try and make as many possible people as she can smile rather than just the select few of the Kalos region. So Plarmo suggests that Serena go to the Alo- uh, uh, sorry, sorry that was wrong, the Hoenn region where she can go ahead and do the Hoenn contest and that's basically the end of the episode. So what I like about this episode, that was the synopsis, so what I like about this episode is Serena's overall conclusion for this entire series. What I mean is that this episode that was very character driven towards Serena and it actually tied her character, tied up her character in like a neat little bow, like it was a satisfying conclusion. I know there's some people who want Serena to go on with Ash to the Alola region or continue to be a character within the series, but for the objectiveness of a Serena just being a one series character, I do think that they tied her up really nicely and gave her a proper conclusion rather than, say, like Iris, who, along with Silent, just said, hey, we're going to Johto, bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. You know, it's like, well, we were hanging out, we came to here for a reason, but we're going to go to the Johto region for no particular reason. Okay, so, yeah, so it's like, this, this was proper conclusion. You know, Dawn and May, they just went to other regions to try contest. You know, May went to Johto. Dawn, I think, went to Hoenn, I believe, or, or even Johto herself. But they basically went over, uh, there, pff, over there, wherever they went, <laughs> for their contest. So it was like a continuation or whatever, and then we have Brock, who became a doctor. That was a nice, proper conclusion. But for Serena, Serena was wanting to be a Kalos queen, but she learned that it wasn't the reason. She actually found out in this episode the true reason why she wanted to be the Kalos region. Her main drive behind becoming the Kalos queen, and she realized that she wasn't going to just be in the Kalos region and try other things and that meant doing contests because that was something that could bring joy to these particular characters. It's not that she wants to be the best coordinator or an effort, it's just that it's adapting to the other regions of what Serena wants to do. Serena wants to bring joy and happiness. How can she do that in, say, a different region when she wants to travel? Of course, that would be the temporary uh, thing of being a coordinator. Now, if she were to go to, like, say, the Unova region, then she would have to find something in the Unova region that makes everyone happy that would fit the Unova region. Or even in the far distant future, even the Alola region, since Alola region, as far as we know, don't have contests or showcases or anything of that nature. She has to find something like that. So, basically, the suggestion that Palermo has was basically a nod to the third generation because they introduced the concept of contest and that's how we were introduced in contest so it makes sense that Palermo's like what is the easiest way that Serena can go somewhere oh we have an established contest hall of content competition in the Hoenn region for like the Grand Festival and ribbons and stuff like that that would probably be Serena's best chance of doing what she wants to do and that's to put smiles on every other people's places so so and then other parts of this particular episode that i liked was that uh her her bonding moment with her pokemon you know kind of after the battle with the with ash or whatever ash was telling serena you know about certain things or whatever and serena was realizing and she was looking at breaks in and then she sent out Pan Cham and Sylveon, and they decided to go the information. This was just a really nice 
episode for Serena, and I think to me this is one of the best Serena episodes ever, because it was, because there was, I, I can't even think of anything that well else was as good or best for Serena's character. Now, of course, the things that I'm not sure about this particular episode is the whole contest thing. You know, I mean, I did say it made sense or whatever, but at the same time, it, it can be seen as a stupid conclusion. Uh, like, on one hand, it is a stupid conclusion. Like, really? that That's the whole big conclusion for Serena? But on the other hand, as I've said, it does make sense. It, it's stupid because... I don't like that when in, in an episode a character is introduced to something for the first time ever, maybe only having a passing knowledge of it, or maybe not even that, and they decide to go for that particular goal. In like the particular instance, instance of Don's Ambipom being introduced to Ping Pong and deciding to be a Ping Pong Pokemon and leaving Don and everything like that. It was like, what? And then in this particular instance, it was Serena being mentioned for the contest in Hoenn because of Palermo. She's like, yeah, I'll do it. Woo! Yippee! This would have made a lot more sense for Serena to happily accept Palermo's suggestion of contest if she saw an exposition, exhibition uh, contest earlier, you know, have like an episode with contest so Serena can get that idea in her head and then be like, yeah, there was that contest. Oh, that makes sense that I would love to do something like that. You know, earlier to introduce the concept to Serena. So it's kind of dumb that because to me, Pokemon showcases seem like a lesser version of contests, like a anime only because they don't want to have contests within the actual show because it's not within the game. So they have to create a half-baked version of contests that is anime only that can get away with it because it's like, why didn't you just have contests to begin with? But, like I said, and I said previously, it does make sense if Serena wants to travel and get better to eventually maybe come back and become the Kalos Queen when she's gone throughout and traveled the whole world, you know, and learn some way in the similar fashion to Ash. Like I said, contests do make sense. Like, she has to start somewhere, and that would probably be the best thing that I've already said before. But <laughs> my notes, I was neglecting my notes, so that's why it's a little off on in regards to that. So that's pretty much all I want to say in regards to this particular episode. I, I really enjoyed it, surprisingly. I'm not going to lie, the uh, writer, and I'm sorry if I say her name wrong, but Amode or Amode, the person who has been the person that's been focused on Serena the most, tends to write really good episodes. And, and in fact, I really did like her battle of Ash versus Sawyer, then Ash versus Alon, you know, there, it, I mean, I could argue, I could agree that Ash versus Alon was more, mo, mo, more, me, <laughs> more monumental for Ash's character, Ash versus Alon, but the, the, the latter half of the battle for Ash versus Sawyer was done really good, if not, it, maybe Gudra versus Slurpuff and Noivern versus Salamance wasn't very good, but Amode really took the focus of Mega Sceptile versus Ash Greninja, and she knocked that out of the park. So, when Amode focuses on one battle, two Pokemon battling, Amode seems like she can really write really good battles, and of course, if the animators are up to the task, she can really do good. So, unlike, say, Ash versus Alon, you know, it's like, sure, Greninja, Ash Greninja versus Mega Charizard X was fine, but it wasn't as good, it wasn't as intense, it was just more monumental because Ash was in the finals, but of course we had the salty ending the way that it was, even though it made sense at that particular portion of time, given that Sun and Moon was around the corner, you know, and they still had to do Team Flare conclusion and stuff. You know, there just literally wasn't any way that Ash could have won that, so... but. Even then, even then, I feel like the battle could have been a little bit more epic because 
Ash versus Sawyer, Septile versus Greninja was amazing, and it was like more intense. It's like my favorite battle, you know. Ash Greninja versus Mega Charizard X had some really cool things, but it felt kind of hollow. Like the amazing things kind of felt hollow. So, props to Amode, the writer, for this particular battle. This or this not battle. This particular episode with Serena. This was an overall enjoyable episode, and if Amode is still going to be a writer for the series, then I look forward to what this particular writer can do in the future, because I, I feel like she's up there. I, I think after Tomi Tomioka as my favorite writer of the series, because I love a lot of the episodes that Tomioka has written, I feel like Amode might be second. I mean, th there may be some amazing episodes. Maybe the conclusion of the Team Flare was written by someone else. But, you know, writers have their, f their focus points where they'll be better at certain things than others, you know. Like, you know, I, I don't mean to, like, criticize, like writers who do something that I don't like because, you know, maybe they can write other better episodes because it's that particular episode. But, you know, it, but I, I do feel like overall Amode, Amode does seem to like make really good episodes or whatever. So that's all I really have to say in regards to this particular episode. Next episode is of course the episode that I really don't want to review because I'm pretty sure you're not going to like it, but since this will be uploaded around the same time as my review for the next episode, I guess you're just going to have to deal. <laughs> I guess uh maybe you'll look at this episode review before the other one, but I'm yeah, I'll try to be objective. I'll really try, but <laughs> I'm going to be very salty, so um, coming up for the videos in regards to the overall Pokemon theme or whatever that this channel has, uh, I did make a one hour video or a little bit over of, of an hour video in regards to the data mine leak of all the, all the Pokemon at that time leaked from the data mine of Pokemon Sun and Moon that I will have to edit. Um, I know that I'm behind the Pokemon news. I, I know there's that evolution uh, special reveal that that Pokemon created for Sun and Moon. The evolutions of Type Null, Jangma O, and Bounce Suite, and those particular instances and everything in that particular video. I'm not sure if I'm going to make a video. If I do, it's going to be a quick, short fire opinion video just so I can have it out as an opinion rather than news because it's a little outdated and so I'm looking forward to Sun and Moon I can't wait for Sun and Moon to come out uh, for the anime there's quite a bit I could talk in regards to the Sun and Moon anime but I ju there's just like so much to focus on that it's hard to find the right place and time and you know technical difficulties and everything so it's it's, it's hard to find the proper time to be able to do every single thing so right now I'll focus on X Y and Z get through these reviews and then maybe I'll go back and talk about the Pokemon games and then hopefully I'll come back to Sun and Moon anime and talk about all the new information and my overall thoughts of what's going to happen in regards to that so look forward to my review for the goodbye Ash Greninja episode which will be coming up already if if I did upload this at the same time. So anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Dustin Benzel, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.